John, when you look at this Gold Cup, bigger priority winning the trophy or finding some players here and, and maybe building your squad out as we go into 2024 and beyond? Yeah, it's a, it's a balance of both, Oli. Um, I think coming out of the Nations League final and that preparation for Nations League, you know, some players were a little bit banged up. Some players needed that emotional rest. And I think looking at how we had to calibrate then, it's changed the perspective for this tournament. So it's probably leaning more towards opportunity. I think with the fall windows being in doubt, it's maybe given us an opportunity that's a gift now to, to really have a look at the depth as we use the rest of this year, maybe in, in this window to test the likes of Ali Ahmed, Zach McGraw, to give opportunities to people like Jaden Nelson, Jacob Schaffelberg, guys that have always been on that periphery, but you know, there's always been a game where there was something absolutely on the line, and I think there is for a Gold Cup, but when you look right into the core of what we're doing here, we're gonna try and win it, but at the same time, I wanna be fair to these lads and give them an opportunity and find out if we can springboard a Tejon Buchanan type through the games here. How do you go about kind of setting the expectations with that in mind? Because obviously you've lost Steph and Sam from the tournament as yeah. well. How, how do you kind of manage the expectations of the group as to what they want to achieve? But... Yeah, they're hungry. I think that's the exciting thing. The the intensity this week, there's, there's been like a, a real energy in, in the environment that there's nothing taken for granted. You know, players are doing the extra work. The veteran players have been running extra meetings. The, you know, the time that's been spent in this room doing the extra preparation, the players have been hungry for it. Uh, it feels like where we were two years ago, where there's a hungry group of players that want to take an opportunity and use this Gold Cup to personally for themselves, but also I think collectively to show that, you know, this country is deep. And I think the last Gold Cup was a great example of that. We didn't have our core players uh, through that tournament, but we really then worked on those elements of connection, brotherhood, which I thought created a great foundation, which ultimately allowed us to have that next man up strategy, which got us through World Cup qualifying. And so I think this tournament's going to be massive for that and for our future. Deep reflection and kind of a deep dive on yeah. the Nations League, but have you how do you kind of reflect on that tournament and particularly the final? Yeah, I mean, I, I think my reflections are the same coming out the final. Um, you know, I think you look at that from a, an objective analytical perspective. You look at it, how it felt in the game as a coach. And a, a team like the US, they can, they can overrun you. They can run you rampant. Um, we've felt that before from them. You know, when we played them in Nashville, it was wave after wave and we had to hold a very low press, but this game was different. Um, I thought we took them out of their identity, which is, you know, that style of football. Uh, we forced them into a direct game. I thought we broke their press well. So there's things we did really well against that team, but then there was things they did way better than us. Uh, and those things I thought were in our control. Um, some of it came down to our preparation. And then some of it came down to the small margins again on the night, which we've seen at, at the World Cup. What happens in that box versus that box? And I think the stats sort of back that up. You know, there's one or two shots between both teams. Um, and given you're playing a, a, an away match in USA to a team that for me are easily the best on paper in CONCACAF, you know, I thought the guys put in a good performance. I think the disappointment in Canada is we just expect so much now. And that expectation is a gift and a curse. The curse is if we don't show up and we're right on the money or we don't do that preparation, the level that's required, then we're going to be disappointed. And there was an element of preparation, a little bit of intensity that that... You know, that real, what you see in a BMO field when we play at home, we've got our cry, crowd behind us, or in Hamilton when you've got your crowd behind us. But I feel like um, 
you know, big lessons again. If you think of Orlando, when we played the US Nations League and we were beaten, they scored two set pieces in the first 30 minutes of that game and they had 13 days preparation to Canada's four. This, they score a set piece goal, which, uh, which was tough. It's tough to, to overhaul a, a US team in the US. That's not an easy task uh, in a final. So for us, preparation's key. Uh, we've got to push to get the preparation right. The details in the boxes have to be closed. That gap has to be closed now. And then in the middle, I thought the middle was, was where the game was very equal, if not in favour of Canada. You mentioned kind of the reaction and the disappointment among some fans and then media as well in the game. I guess in many ways that's a compliment to the way the expectations have, have risen in, in your time in charge. Did, did that reaction surprise you? I haven't seen quite that strong before. For, for yeah, I, think it was, I thought it was personal to the players and the staff. I thought it was disappointing and personal. But, I mean, this is the industry you're in. You know, media uh, want to take an angle and, and you've got to accept that. That's part of when a country cares now and, and they want to talk about football, then you're going to get media who are going to talk this way and media that talk that way. And you accept that. For us, it, it will make us stronger. And, and again, like, w we have to be very clear around our expectations. Our expectations was to win a final for the first time in 20 years. We have to say that because we're Canada, new Canada, and then we have to take the disappointment with that. And, you know, the, the tough criticism, that's the disappointment. We feel the disappointment. Our country feels the disappointment. But I think when the emotion settles down, I think people, you would hope, start to see um, a bit more objectivity and some of the facts and the realities around the game. So. Yeah, you take that on the chin and uh, we keep pushing to expect more. And that's, that's what we want from you as the media. We want that from our fans. You talked in the aftermath of that game as well about building towards 2026 and, and the pathway there and what needs to be done. Um, obviously, there's been a story out this morning which again shows the, how complicated that path is maybe going to be. How are you kind of navigating that as a coach right now as you look forward to you know, camps later in the year yeah. and beyond that? Yeah, I've been, I've been navigating that for two years, two and a half years. That, this isn't a new story, it's, it, it's a reality. I think our organisation are working hard behind the scenes to find solutions. I think the, the big challenge that you're facing is you've gone to the World Cup as a team, as a country. And you expect on the other side of that to be rainbows and unicorns, that you're advancing programming, you're advancing staffing, you're able to increase elements of sports science, and then you're advancing the opportunities to play tier one games, which I was very vocal about that. You cannot go into a World Cup with one tier one preparation match in 10 years. We have to be planning this. So to, you know, for people who probably didn't understand the frustration to, to one, to potentially not have games in September and October. You know, that's heartbreaking. Like our game, we've got to come together somewhere, somehow to find solutions. Because for me, I'm that passionate about my job, which is to stand on guard for the men's national team, to stand on guard for the women's national team. That's been my life for 13 years. So when I see and feel that it needs to change. I have to be vocal about that. And for an organization, I believe that Jason DeVos will drive and find solutions. I think we have a, an organization that are committed to find solutions. And it's about coming together. There's no point pointing fingers. There's no point trying to assign some blame. But people have to understand the facts that if New Canada is going to be a genuine New Canada, all of this other thing has to change. We, we, we need the right preparation going into a home World Cup that we want to win. I want to be able to say to you and the fans, we want to win this World Cup at home. And there's nothing stopping us from doing that if we go all in together as a group. So I think there's solutions and we've got to stay solution focused. Do you, if this isn't too simplistic a question, do you know what the solutions look like? Do you feel like you have an idea of what you want to do here and it's a case of, of implementing it? 
Well, I think there's, there's a revenue reality. And, you know, there's been some very vocal elements around the, the revenue avenue. But that's, that, that's for Jason DeVos, that's at the board level. I can only come down to a micro reality of these extra five, six days make a difference or else teams won't bother to do them extra five or six days as part of their preparation. We need the finances to do that. We need the experiences of playing, you know, Croatia again, Belgium again, to, to learn, you know, how you turn those missed opportunities into golden moments. So that's, that's what I know in terms of the preparation. These September, October windows, we should have been ahead trying to get our tier one games. But again, it's not as easy as, as, as said to get those games and they cost a lot of money. And we're just not ready to invest in that, that level of investment to get, I think, both of our national teams up at the investment level of maybe the top tiers in the world. So our expectations here for the men and women's team are very high from the fan base, but we've got to aim as a group, I think collectively, media, fans, to, to understand this is a growth of the whole game to get us to this next level. Um, and there are people committed and passionate to get us there. So, you know, what, what I said might have been interpreted as excuses. They're not excuses. It, it's fact for me. It's, it's a reality. Um, if you'd give us a 10-day window, I would have took a 10-day window because I know it prepares the team. I wouldn't have opted for a four-day window before the biggest final in, in 20 years, you know. Boys from Bito, he's got a lot of kind of talk around him as a, as a prospect. Dominic Sintour has been with you for a little while now. And then obviously Zach McGraw comes into the squad as well. Maybe just your impressions on, on those players so far. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an exciting group. And I, I'm going to keep saying this, like the glass half empty was, you know, players were pulling out of, of the Gold Cup because of injury, fatigue. You know, we knew some players weren't coming in because the clubs had put pressure on them. But the glass half full is, I get the chance now. But more importantly, I have to. I have to give opportunity to players, um, which, which I think, you know, as a coach, there's no better position to be in where you know you have to rely on a player that uh, is hungry for that opportunity. So when you look at someone like a, a Mois Bombito, for me, we've looked at his profile a bit differently to where you know, he's been utilised at club. We, we think there's, there's other elements of his game and his profile that we can capitalise on based on our future. Um, so you'll see him maybe utilised differently for, for periods in this Gold Cup. Uh, Zach McGraw, you know, we know he's a, a seasoned MLS player now. He's, he's picked up a lot of caps for Portland and he gives us a, a defensive profile. Um, that, that I think strengthens us. Uh, you know, in the, in the past, I've probably gone for more ball playing centre backs, guys that are, you know, the Ali Johnsons, Kamal Millers, that, that can pretty much break lines. And with Zach, I'm very clear that he provides a defend first sort of mentality and he gives us this physical profile that when you come up against the Hades, the Hondurases, that we're going to need. And then you look at people like Ali Ahmed. I mean, young Ali, for me, I've looked at his uh, midfield profile, uh, with, particularly with the Vancouver Whitecaps when he's played in midfield. And he just has that, that turn of pace. He has that fearlessness to, to break lines and run at people. And I'm looking at those attacking mid profiles and where this team might need to get to. So you'll, you'll get an opportunity to show that. And, and I think all of us are excited to, to break some of these players in and take that risk.